Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. We're gonna be showing you the R1T next. On Now You Know. This week's episode is sponsored by Blinkist. Zach and I are super busy between researching, writing, filming, corresponding, interviewing. You get it. Well, for most of us, there just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done and fill your brain with all the things you're curious about. I love podcasts and books, but unfortunately, they take a long time to digest. And that's why we both use Blinkist. With Blinkist, you can get the key ideas from nonfiction bestsellers in minutes, not hours. Blinkist not only blinks books, but it also blinks podcasts. They're called shortcasts. So you can get to the powerful ideas of a podcast in about 15 minutes or less. I like to listen to shortcasts and blinks while I'm driving, going for walks, cooking. Then if I like something, I can really dive in. Blinkist has full length audiobooks with premium subscribers getting special member pricing up to 65% off the regular retail price. Yeah, pop Blinkist on your phone and take it anywhere you go. And don't get me wrong, I also love to read books, big, long books, so I use Blinkist to help me cull through the hundreds of books to find the ones I really want to spend my time with. And this is why 21 million people are using Blinkist. Yeah, with over 5,000 books and podcasts to choose from, I think if you're like me, you're going to get addicted. Sign up for Blinkist now using our link below and get unlimited access for one week to try out Blinkist. You'll also get 25% off if you want to try the premium membership. And the seven-day trial is completely free. You can cancel at any time during that period. All right, Jesse, so we picked up the R1T the other day. We've had it for about 48 hours, and, uh, you know, we found some things we like, some things we don't, and took some notes. And, I mean, obviously we're going to have more thoughts the longer we own this thing and stick around, obviously. But, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about our first thoughts. All right, so one of the first things, Jesse, is the... <laughs> Yeah, one of the first things is the paint. I'm not like a big paint guy, uh -huh. but the first things I noticed was in certain light, yeah. there's an orange peeling. It's called orange peeling when basically this you- This is blue. No, no, not the color orange. Okay. Orange peeling, where it's got that the texture of an orange. Okay. And so if you look carefully in certain light, especially on certain panels, like this one. It's very wavy. It's wavy. And, and like, I don't care. I'm not a paint guy. Yeah. But, you know, if you pay this much money for a luxury product, I feel like they should get the paint right. Now, I'm guessing that as they go, they'll tweak this and get it better. Yeah. But I got to say, if I was into that kind of thing, I'd be pretty upset. So next thing, let's come back to the tonal cover. Okay. I love that it has a tonal cover. Right. But go ahead and hit the button to close it. Okay. And what do you notice? A lot of clunking loud and I can handle loud yeah I don't mind the loud I guess so my first thought when I first saw it is I thought these were plastic um, they're not they're no. metal um, but it had like a plasticky feel to it right and then it has this um, you know they're overlapping which I yeah. get they have to do but yeah it felt like it's gonna break like I, I don't know why I feel that something way. about the the jerkiness very jerky and then what's this all about it doesn't look like it opens all the way right like, cause wasn't that take up some of your space that you need in the bed? I definitely think so. I thought when we first picked it up that this would go all the way. I thought so too. So I'm a little worried that we might have, it might have already broken. We're just getting like little pine needles and stuff on here, but like, you know, you leave it parked out for a while. Like snow, I'm Open thinking. it again, no one Ice can hear me. Ice and snow. Me. Ice and snow, there's no like brush or anything. And also this kind of flexes up and down and then that click sound. I mean, maybe it's just locking into place. I don't know. It's a little weird. And the, the thing is, you know, most people, most truck owners probably don't care if right. the tonal cover is on and off, but range range is going to be super heavily affected by this. And again, normally with a gas truck, you don't care. Um, but because it's electric, uh, you want to keep the clothes as often as you can. Right. All right. Next up is uh, the gear tunnel step. So open that up for us. Sure. There's a little button right there and then you pull down. And there's one on the other side as well. Yeah. So this, I love this feature because first of all, it lets you into the gear tunnel. And I can also step on it. Okay, but here's where I have a little problem. So Ooh. first thing is look at the flex in that step. It's rated at 250 pounds. You are not 250 no. pounds. Um, and I'm just a little worried that over time that that could... Well, and I'm not all the way out. Like if I know you stepped that, on it... That's a lot of torque. That's a lot of torque. So I don't know, I'm just a little concerned. Then, then what you're stepping on, uh, yeah, open up that plastic. Okay. It's 
flimsy plastic and it doesn't inspire confidence, I guess I'd say. Yeah, good for a drum, but like, I don't know, it just seems yeah. like a very cheap part of the car. Now, what they store here on this side is the air hose, on the other side is the first aid kit. That's so that's, cool. that's really cool. But yeah, I just don't like that it's very chintzy okay. to me. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. One thing I thought would be in there would be some hooks or places to tie down. Let's say you stuffed a, some skis in here. Sure. Now keep in mind, we're gonna be putting in a camp kitchen in here. Right. But you know, for the times that you wanna put stuff in here, it just, I was surprised to see that there's no way to tie it down. But uh, there is some cool feature here in the middle, uh, we're showing you right now that there's a pass through to the gear tunnel. So if you wanna get a drink out of a cooler, you can just reach back there. Or if you wanna whack the guy that you just, <laughs> uh, you know, threw in there, you know, in New Jersey. Wouldn't you've you already whacked him before you put Oh, I him meant in? like hit him around, but you're I right, see. yeah. He's already been whacked. Right, but now he can get out, right? Is there a, an escape button? There is an escape button uh, on both sides. So. so you can't really kidnap people easily with the gear tunnel. <laughs> which is good, which is good, I, I appreciate that. All right, then let's go to the rear. I wanna show you a panel gap. Generally, these panel gaps have been really good, um, but there's a panel gap back here that I think most people would notice. And what I'm talking about, can you see it? Yes, I can see it from all the way back here. Yeah, so basically, on this left side this is high and big on the right side it seems pretty good and so i don't know if that's something that can be adjusted or if, like I and that's i think you're stuck with it really okay yeah um my other question here yeah that doesn't line up either looks like it's like a little brokey wokey well i mean that comes off right to reveal the tow hitch yes so the tow hitch lives under here all right and it looks like two screws and then this this piece comes off. So I guess it doesn't have to look great. And it's gonna be off a lot with us. We're gonna be towing, we're gonna be towing. Uh, you wanna talk about what the uh, the picking up process? Yeah, I do wanna talk about that actually. Uh, this isn't legal in, in our state. No, we actually drove here illegally. Uh, in Massachusetts, you can't have an out of state uh, template. Right. Um, but we had to do that because Rivian did really screw up our delivery a bunch of times. We were supposed to get this back in March. It is now uh, almost mid April and uh, I couldn't take another delay. So I was like, whatever, mm -hmm. I'll make it work. But yeah, the delivery process was anything but smooth. Right, now we are a bit of an oddball case. You know, we were picking it up in New York, driving it to Massachusetts, we're insuring it and registering it in Massachusetts. And we're but, one of the few uh, people who are doing something like that. Right. Um, their delivery schedule was supposed to be for Californians and New Yorkers. But we wanted to bring you this truck as quickly as possible. So <laughs> right. we kind of, you know, yeah. fudged it. So if we go into the back of the truck, so let's open the tonneau cover. Let's open the gate. Okay. There's two cool features back here that most pickup trucks don't have, if yes. any. One is on this side. We've got nice. power outlets, two power outlets, which I'm excited to use. That's great. Um, and this door feels pretty good. It's got a nice gasket. So on the other side, we've got a really cool feature, which is air compressor. You can dial in what you want your PSI to be. So you could fill up your tires, a bike, whatever you want. I love that. You could do uh, air tools, like an air gun. Oh, wow. But this door feels like uh, it's gonna just break right off. Like it just does Even not- Even with it closed. It does not inspire confidence. Wow. So it's just little things like that, which I was surprised about because you know generally the truck is good quality. Okay, so then, uh, is that a spare tire in there? What's well, this? you can get it with a spare tire. I chose not to yeah. for, cause you know, weight, but so we can use this space for oh, a wow. sub trunk. You could fill it with, uh, you know, ice, I guess, if you wanted to. I'm excited about the fact that we've got this sub trunk area. It's going to be great for storage of different items, but here's what I don't like. Go ahead and close that. Okay. No, no, close it. Okay. Now you think it's closed, right? But that one looks like oh, it yeah. ho hooked and this one didn't. So you there, really- now it's down, but it's very, a, a lot little clay. A little, yeah, a little rattly. And I mean, rattly. if you have something sitting on it, isn't it just going to be wearing stuff out? I Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Just uh, just wanted to point it out to everybody. And then this is not powered up. It's just powered down, so you got to close it yourself. And as Steven has said, he does not like it that you have to touch the paint when you're closing it. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. It, I mean, it's part of the look to have the paint right here, but on a lot of trucks, it would be more yeah, rugged plastics. Exactly. That way, if you're wearing gloves and the gloves are covered with what sand gosh or, knows what right. yeah you wouldn't be scratching up the paint right, right there i mean you could be really careful with it you could be re if you really cared you could uh -huh, yeah like that okay if you were really thinking about it when you're closing up your truck because you put something in and you need to stay and you close it like that yeah 
So let's talk about something I wish came when we picked up the truck, which yeah, are the cargo racks that clip onto here. They also clip on the top. They don't come when you pick up the truck. They ship them two weeks later. And I asked, could you ship them before I get the truck? No. Uh, also the bike racks, no. So that means when you get home with the truck, you can't play with the I truck. Mean, we have stuff to move. Yeah, we have to do stuff. And like Rivian thinks that they'll ship it to you later. I don't know if that's just an early problem. I hope it is, okay. but I'm not fond of that. Uh, so let's talk about ride height. Right now we're in a standard setting, but this goes all the way down to very low, all the way up to very high. Uh, it goes from nine inches to 15 inches. So a six inch travel. When it's very low, it looks like we're uh, like a low rider. Yeah. And when it's very high, it looks like you could probably clear over anything. Wow. So I, I'm just surprised that they actually went to that extreme. It seems like they're going for rock crawling and stuff like that. And I don't know about you, but I just don't picture someone spending this kind of money on the truck would want to do that with the truck. But mm. I don't know, what do you think? I'm, I'm not a truck guy. I feel like they need to address a large market because it's the first electric pickup truck. And so if they only did one thing, I think that people couldn't justify uh, paying for it. So I think that they went for a little bit of everything where they're going, you know, okay, you can rock climb in it, but you can also, you know, it's, it's definitely a, just vehicle that you can drive around with the family. All right, let's go over to the frunk. There's a couple ways you can open the frunk. You can use the fob. You can also do it manually right here. There's a little hidden button right there. Oh, nice. And this is powered open and powered closed. Oh, that's nice. And so if we look inside, I'm really impressed. So, I mean, look how big this is already. Yeah. And this is actually a false bottom. Yeah, and go one more. And then the magnets catch that. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it looks like there's uh, water drains down there. Oh, that's cool. And it's a... Uh like a burping water drain. So, I mean, you could fill it up with ice, um, keep your drinks in there. But um, there's a really cool uh, thing here to, you know, keep loose things like cables. Uh, this is your uh, mobile charging kit. Oh, cool. These are the Rivian, like special cables for tying stuff down in the back. Oh, wow. Um, so that's pretty cool. And of course you get your child seat lower anchor ridge guides. Oh. But yeah, overall, man, look at this frunk. I am digging it. Humongous. And uh, there's lights. And there's 12 power, volt. 12 oh, volt. wow. So we can put a cooler in here. And there's a button to get you out if you get locked in. And of course, this is where your windshield wiper fluid goes. Nice. All right. And it's powered closed. Although there's no beep when you close it. So make sure you know that. Yeah, very, very odd. These are for picking it up. Picking. <laughs> Don't throw your back out. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I'd like to talk about is the sound system. Uh, okay. Normally we can't play songs because they're copyrighted, but we own this one, so uh, let's just pop that in there. Okay. And uh, crank it a little. So basically my thoughts about the sound system, just first listens, listening to about 10 songs. I'm really impressed, a mm -hmm. lot of power. It seems like it's a nice overpowered system so that you get really crisp stuff even when you're listening loud. I love that it's a nine band EQ and I love that uh, Spotify is one of the kind of integrated apps cause I like Spotify mm -hmm. a lot. This works really easily setting up with our phones. You can also use TuneIn. I'm not super impressed with the UI. As you notice, like this covers that mm -hmm. and so you gotta know to swipe it in, but I'll get used to it. But I love being able to move stuff around really easily um i love the immersive settings so overall i'm really impressed with the sound system how about you uh yeah the sound system's great uh let's talk about the ui for a little bit um nice and responsive i was worried about that in the beginning because i had seen videos where it looks slower so i think they've upgraded something yeah so i mean this is is really nice now i did notice that when we were driving home from new york at highway speeds um, it, in certain locations, it was having trouble updating the map. So we would very often drive from satellite imagery into a green abyss. <laughs> you could still see where the road was. That wasn't too big an issue, but it, it was something that like, I only would encounter in my Tesla if we were driving into the middle of absolutely no cell coverage. Here we were driving through Connecticut with pretty decent cell coverage, so it was kind of weird to see that. But other than that, I mean, the navigation isn't terrible. I, I don't 
it's gonna probably take some getting used to for me. I really like how they integrated the screen into the dash. Um, it doesn't stick out like it does in the Model 3, which mm -hmm. I know it feels very refined. I love how they did both of these. And they, I like the ratio, the aspect ratio. It looks less like an iPad stuck on there and more mm -hmm. like they designed it around it. There's a feature I really like in Nav. So this is telling me that uh, this, is, this range to my destination is based on the conserve mode. If I hit this, I get range estimates conserve, mm. this is what I'll have um, when I get there versus all purpose versus sport. I kind of like that because then you don't have to be like doing math in your head. You can just be like, oh, you know, I can drive sporty there and sell plenty of miles I or I can't. Now, the one thing that to me is a little uh, iffy is I have no place to see my efficiency. I have no graph mm. to see how I've been driving. I have no number telling me my watt hourage. Um, I know that it's high. I know that we should be getting about 480 watt hours per mile, which is double what a Model 3 does. It makes sense. It's a pickup truck, yep. obviously. But I don't have any way to judge how I'm doing. Right. So I've turned up the AC. This is it at full blast. Oh, and I really love this. It's just like in a Tesla. You yep. can adjust where it hits you. Both. And there's two separate. So you got one on the left. That is nice. And one from the center. You can so aim it exactly where you want it. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Um, it's also got auto, which I like. It's also got cooled seats. So you can turn on a cold fan under your butt. Um, well, let's talk, yeah, let's talk about the seats for a second. Very firm seats. Yes. I love the heating and cooling. The the, yeah. the cooling happened fast. Yes. Uh, and three different settings for each. I, I really like that a lot. In fact, I'm getting a nice cool cool breeze mm -hmm. on my back and butt right now, and that's very nice. Yeah, I have nothing bad to say about the, the seats. I do have something bad to say about the steering wheel. Okay, what's wrong with it? It feels, tell me what it feels like to you. I, I won't even, uh, you know, alter your thoughts. Just, what do you think? So, I mean, this looks really nice. Um, I like the wood accent here. I don't love the stitching on the inside. It feels a little uncomfortable. Maybe once, once you feel that fully your your dead skin, it'll be a little smoother. Mm. It feels chintzy to me. It feels like the wrong thickness. I wanted a thicker wheel. It just feels like a Hyundai wheel. This part I like a lot, and I do love these knobs. Really, really nice feel to them, uh, and the buttons on either side. Mm. But but yeah, the wheel itself, I just wasn't a fan of yep but i do love how these feel they feel like all the movements feels really nice yep and then you also have some controls over here mm -hmm. um, to adjust kind of your windshield wipers and your lights can we talk about the center console thing um so this opens up okay and really deep um it's got two usb c ports down there then up here really nice feature so that's where you're supposed to put your phone yep and then the cable can go through there right so your phone can sit flat, which I think is fine. It can also stand up, although it can't charge while you're doing that. But there's no glove box. No. So the place to store stuff like that, I think would be under your seat. There's a little tiny, tiny. No, that's too small. You can't put your registration there. Well, you there. could fold it up. I don't think, listen, if I get pulled over. I mean, can you? And I start reaching under my seat. Oh, I don't yeah. think that's where I'm gonna want it. I feel like the, the place is supposed to be, hang on, I'm reaching over here for my glove box. But uh, I guess you got to keep it in there. I guess you keep it in there. It's not really conducive. You could put it behind your seat, I guess, in that pocket. But Yeah, but then anyone can grab it. There is a, like a little thing to grip paperwork, but... Yeah, but I mean, look at, the, look at how narrow this is. Yeah. And look how actually short it is. That comes up about halfway. So, I don't know. That I'm a little confused where to... I'm just worried that I, in my life, that would get filled with junk. Yeah, like layers would, and layers, layers of junk. Of, and then you'll never, right. ever see any of it again. You also have the Bluetooth speaker, <laughs> the Rivian Bluetooth speaker. It's nice. It yeah, looks... It's a, it's a camp speaker. So looks you nice. Can, you know, take it with you camping. USB-C, so it should be able to... Uh, yeah. And it has an interlock, so that way when you're driving, it won't fall out. Yep. But that means that every time you put the car in drive or park, it's opening and closing some interlock. Someday that's going to break and it's either going to be stuck in there or you're going to be driving around it's going to fall out. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's rated to last for the lifetime of the vehicle. That remains to be seen. It does kind of feel weird, though, that there is no glove box. So can we talk about uh, Rivian's version of autopilot? Um, we drove it home from New York in that mode a lot and uh, it did what it was supposed to yep. for the most part. Every now and then it would give you a warning that I don't know what this road is or something, yes. even though it was well marked and you would have to take over. It cannot change lanes on its own. You have to do that yourself. But it, it felt very reliable for the most part. There was one point when we were going through a tunnel and it said, take over. So 
We had the hands on the wheel. And then it told us to take it out of autopilot. So we had to do it ourselves, which I kind of like because it's consistent. So it's, it's telling you to do something, you have to do it. Uh, we didn't because we didn't know that we had to. It kicked us out, started to slow down the vehicle, which freaked us out a little bit. And then we couldn't go back in until we put the car back in park. Mm. So very similar to autopilot, how if you don't listen to it, it will kick you out and you won't be able to put it back in. For some people, that's going to be fine. For other people, it's very flustersome. There's a lot of fluster happening all, all at once because suddenly the car wants you to do a whole bunch of different steps. It felt like AP1 in a Tesla circa 2016. It did not feel beyond that. So I'm hoping with software that they can update that. But if not, it's a very basic function. Yeah. So I want to talk about the efficiency. Uh, we've calculated that it's 480 watt hours per mile. That's what's on the Mulroney sheet. We'll give you an update as we drive more. Mm -hmm. 480 watt hours per mile, like Jesse said, is half as efficient as a Model 3. So that means that whenever you charge, it's it's taking you twice as long to charge, if you know what I mean. For any given amount of, of uh, charging speed, it's going to take twice as long to get the same range uh, compared to a Model 3. Now, uh, let's talk about the range sticker range is 315 miles uh, when we were driving back from new york it was giving us a sub 300 mile range but we only got it with about 92 percent in the battery pack right but that was showing us what it would be full i see and so i'm a little worried because to me i thought originally we we're going to get 350 miles yeah now that we're at 315 and maybe even sub 300 um that's not exactly what I wanted to hear. It's a little different, and then if we uh, pull up the charging map here, I've said it said it's only looking for 100 plus kilowatt chargers. Well, let's just pretend for a second that we want to go to like Stowe, Vermont. Sure. A very common destination in the winter. Stowe, Vermont. And so I want to see where we could charge. Okay, so it's calculating the route. It says that we can get there with 41 miles left, okay. which is impressive, I'll yeah. be honest. I mean, that's great. But and we're not even fully charged. So. We're not even fully charged. We're at about 80 some percent. But if I wanted to stop and charge. Right. So maybe we have to go a little bit further. Let's, let's go to Montreal. Let's go to Montreal. So, okay. Montreal. And hopefully it's going to find us a charger. Okay. So it found one all the way up in Johnsbury, St. Johnsbury. Okay. Charging stop. Tell me about it. We'd be there for an hour and 22 minutes. So it sounds like a 50 kilowatt. That sounds like a 50 kilowatt. So I'm going to go back. But I mean, it doesn't tell us. Right. So I'm going to find where this guy is. So yeah, it's not showing up on our over 100 kilowatts. It is 50 kilowatts. Someone's parked there right now. It's a one stall. And that's my thing. This isn't a dig on Rivian. It's a dig on the charging network for non-Tesla non cars, Yes. which is that in our neck of the woods, uh, if you want to go north to the mountains, or even if you want to go south to New York, there's very few choices of high-speed charging at the moment. Now, and by the way, this vehicle charges at 150 kilowatts. Right. So you're not going to be doing like 250 kilowatt charging like you can do in a Model 3 or a Model Y. Right. And, it, and again, the 150 kilowatts is going to feel more like 75 kilowatts uh, in a Model 3 because for every kilowatt hour that you're getting, you're getting half the number of miles right. of, of distance. Now, it only has three networks that it says it can find. Hang on, let's go to a Rivian charger. Yeah, there are none around here. Oh. Just, just to, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's particular places in the world with Rivians. But here's and the thing, there's no Electrify America. Oh, button. Button, but there are Electrify America chargers. Oh, so you have to find those manually? Uh, I guess so. I'm not sure if it I would. I don't like that. So. On our trip up to Montreal, there are no chargers that are over 100 kilowatts. That's awful. That's really pretty bad. It's bad on Electrify America, although I would ar also argue that Rivian should be stepping up their game. The yeah, White I mean, Mountains they said, and- They and, said over a year ago, I think, that they were gonna start to install these. Where are they? I think that they're all in Moab and Colorado and, and places like that. But I mean, Lake Winnipesaukee, it's a very common vacation spot. Yeah. Just one charger there, one fast charger would make all the difference. Uh, let's talk about the different modes. We drove it home in conserve mode yeah. um, and it felt fine. Uh, then we put it in sport mode the other day when we didn't have to worry about range and boy was it sporty. It felt like the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it felt, it felt heavy, 
but it also felt very powerful. Yeah, I mean, it rivaled Sparky's P90D feeling. It just, uh, having, I think it's what, 150 kilowatt motors on four wheels? Yes. Just, you felt it. It was, was rocking and It rolling. was rocking. So that's really exciting. I can't wait to try that out some more. The other thing I want to talk about is the regenerative braking, which feels awesome. Very strong regen braking. You can um, one pedal drive this thing. You can totally one pedal drive it. You can turn it down to standard. I love high. Here's the thing with regen braking. It's, it's great to have regen braking, but then at a certain point, a lot of vehicles stop giving you regen braking. So like in my Leaf, it's very weak. And then you have to switch over to the brake pedal um, and, and you just end up with a completely different driving experience. I really, 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 really like the regen on this. Super duper strong. Suspension. Um, so when we were driving it, I thought for a while that we were in like the stiff setting, but then we saw that we were in soft. I didn't feel a lot of difference between soft and stiff, but it, it did feel you know, uh, you're feeling a lot of the bumps. Now, I'm used to driving like a van in, in my early years pickup truck, so to me this felt great. What did you think? Felt really stiff, really terse to me. Felt really bumpy. Um, I'm used to driving over potholes. I live in New England. This is not new. Um, I feel like most of the cars that I've been driving for recently have been soaking up the bumps pretty well. I'll hear it. The car will definitely shudder a little bit, but it won't... I won't feel it and I won't get moved around. Kind of like, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm feeling every little mm. perturbance in the road with this thing. It also might be because we were in the lowest mm. setting. Cause obviously when you're on the highway, it puts you in the lowest that conserves the most amount of energy. Um, but I think it might make for a more terse ride, more experimentation needed. A uh, cool feature is there a little trick flashlight in the door there. It's the 7,777th battery. Uh, it's kind of a cool thing. It's using 18650s, just like in Sparky, I mm -hmm. believe, and it's double stacked. Um, to me, this 135 kilowatt hour battery is circa 2016. Really? Yeah, there's, I don't think there's any tech beyond what uh, you know a 2016 Tesla has. So I feel like there's just a lot of extra weight. This vehicle is 7,200 pounds, wow. and uh, that's why I think the watt hours is so inefficient. And I feel like we're really going to feel that when we drive it a little more aggressively. I think that we're really gonna feel it wanna corner a little bit differently. Obviously it has humongous tires. Let's talk about the tires for a second. Yeah, we had a bunch of choices. These are 20 inch um, and yeah, all terrain, Pirelli, Scorpions. I love the brand, I love the, the tires, but yeah, they're gonna be expensive to change. Mm. And I don't know if I got the right choice to be honest, because like half the time I'm gonna want a highway tire and half the time I'm gonna want a complete off-road tire. So I had to choose like the in-between, which isn't really good for either. But I think that most of the time people would probably go for the highway tire yeah. um, as opposed to going for off-road. It depends on your use case, um, I think, but like, for like the average family who's only gonna go camping like once a year, you probably don't need the off-road tires. Uh, it's probably not something that you're even gonna like change out or something. I feel like you just keep the highway tires. They're probably gonna be big and beefy enough to get you around, but um, yeah, we wanna do a little bit of crazy stuff, some crazy YouTuber stuff. Speaking of crazy YouTuber stuff, uh, we didn't get the camp kitchen because we're gonna build our own. And we think we're gonna build one that's even better and cheaper than theirs, so we're gonna be showing you that. The other thing we didn't get, which I want, is the tent. But we are gonna get the same exact tent from Yakima. Uh, we're just gonna go pick it up uh, separately at REI. We're gonna get it cheaper, and we think it's gonna work. We're not 100% sure. That's gonna be an adventure we'll we're gonna go work. do. We'll make it work. Let's find out. Absolutely. I love sitting in the rear seats actually in this car mm -hmm. because the skylight is just beautiful. Uh, the sound system sounds great back there. It's just a really wonderful ride. So I'm really excited because normally you think of a pickup truck and you think of the rear seats as like a, you know, afterthought. Mm -hmm. Here, a lot of leg room and I'm really excited that this is like a luxury car almost. There's a lot of stuff we're going to show you. What I want you guys to do is put down in the comments what you want us to do with this truck because we got it for you. We got it so that we can show you all the features, answer all your questions. So ask away. We will try and get those answered for you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope we showed you some good and introductory features of the R1T. Uh, we're going to be bringing you way more content. Make sure you put comments down below on what you want to see. We'll see you next week. Now, now you, you know. know. I fit. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 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 <sighs>